Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. My name's Mark and you can see that most of the leaves have now fallen. Uh, it happens so fast uh, and I figured, well, it's now fall. Uh, time to do a fall farm tour. Hey Charlotte. These guys are out here just uh, getting the last little bits of morsels before the snow falls. Uh, they don't particularly care too much for the dead leaves. They like the live green leaves. Although Carl and Billy up front, uh, I've been watching them and they seem to not care. They'll, they'll eat them. <laughs> they got a nice crunch to them, I guess. Blackie, what are you doing? Looks like that, uh, that tree has seen better days. That's a, a scratching post, it appears. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> Coco was just scratching between her horns. Uh, that's one area that they just, you know, can't get. So um, when we're petting the goats, we usually get in there between the horns and they quite enjoy that. Uh, or else they'll find other ways to do it. That's uh, Petunia and her little one, Billie Jean. And of course, Holly, which I mistaken I, thought, I saw two black and white hollies here. Usually these ones always kind of stick together. Right, Blackie? <laughs> and then our alpaca. Uh, now, there's been questions that come up uh, every once in a while, and one of them was, what happened to Barry? Uh, so we did have Barry the alpaca before these three came in, uh, and Barry passed away in December of last year. Uh, so he passed away in his sleep, uh, we're not quite sure why, uh, but now we're just down to the three. So, um, you know, if uh, there's there's times where people may miss a episode of the uh, of the channel, uh, and of course they miss a certain section of that. So, um, so this this is of course the garden here, which is pretty much done. Uh, Tara does have some stuff in the greenhouse over here uh, that um, hasn't gotten frosty. We've put. Uh, holly over top of it uh, and there's still some plants that are, uh, are are still growing although I just got a notification on Facebook this morning uh, memories of a year ago uh, I got stuck in the driveway due to snow <laughs> on my way home from work so it is mild and uh, milder than normal um, usually what happens is when we get snow uh, on or around Halloween that snow is going to remain. So, just a matter of time, we've been seeing areas, uh, other areas in Manitoba that have been getting snow, uh, and it's just a matter of time. So we've shut everything down, with the exception of the pond. And what we'll do here is we've got a circulation system that pulls water up from down here and up into the smaller pond. Uh, we've got air bubbling that happens here, which is from the windmill. And uh, we will leave that running until, uh, until, well, until it starts to ice up. We want to keep that water moving. Um, and it's, we don't run it throughout the winter just because of the concerns of open water with the animals, uh, especially, you know, the sheep goats and, and the equine, the ponies. Uh, we don't want them to fall through. And here, here's my favorite little Muscovy duck, Mr. High. Of course, whenever I'm out here, he's got to come over. <laughs> and same with Levi. <laughs> hey, buddy. How are things going? Hey. Enjoying the last little bit of summer, or fall, or before winter. <laughs> I guess it looks like everybody was inside. Uh, so last weekend we put up the poly across here. Uh, we actually didn't put these pieces going along here and we found that when the wind came it, it flapped. Uh, so I came out and I screwed those in place and it's surprisingly warm in there. Uh, it was really cold and windy last week and I came through there and it was actually uh, very nice. So this way of doing things uh, as we have done over with the rabbit uh, hutch and the winter duck shelter. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great way to do it. And the only thing now we have to worry about is uh, watering. So we've got a water waterer or a, a heater that comes into here and sits down in here. We'll flush this out, fill it with some fresh water. 
uh, when the time comes and that is going to be their winter area for water. Uh, we've shut off all the other waters. There's automatic waters that run across here uh, and over into this area here. Uh, so those have all been shut off. Fernando! How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Fernando came in and had lunch the other day. Had some strawberries and people didn't realize that uh, that turkeys eat strawberries, that really like strawberries. Why am I getting jumped here by roosters? <laughs> um, yes, uh, turkeys actually prefer berries. And for this Fernando here, he's, uh, he's gone over and raided a raspberry bush by the driveway. Uh, he's got a couple other accomplices that, uh, that follow him around from time to time. Uh, and I think they prefer berries than anything else. All right, bud? <laughs> so how is the shelter, Bronwyn? No, you're not going to talk about it? <laughs> She's out of here. <laughs> uh, somebody had mentioned about um, the lamb that we have inside, which we'll go in and see shortly. Um, but you can see Bronwyn's tail here is long. Uh, somebody had commented that you should crop the tail uh, because, of course, um, sheep can develop masses at their back end, which can be unhealthy. Uh, but Bronwyn is a haired sheep, so she doesn't have that problem. She sheds off. We don't have to shear her. But if you come over here and look at tur Turbo, I'm getting, I'm in the middle of something here. What is your problem, buddy? What is your problem? Come here. <laughs> oh boy. Always trying to play for dominance, you guys. <laughs> oh, it's nothing but an adventure out here, isn't it? <laughs> Fernando, you're supposed to be uh, protecting me, bud. Uh, so you'll see Turbo's tail is cropped. Uh, and that's because uh, sheep, wool sheep, uh, it grows and it can close in on their back end. All right, there's George. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look at this. Oh, Meadow. You know, she did this at one point last year. And, you know, it's kind of scary because <laughs> you don't normally see equine lying down. Um, but she does fairly regularly. What are you doing, girl? <laughs> are you taking a nap? <laughs> and of course, Levi was right, standing right behind her when I came up. <laughs> You're silly. Hey? Yeah. There's Levi. <laughs> uh, okay, so going into the shelter to check things out. I noticed the pigs are out. How did, Daisy, how did you get in there? I guess she came in underneath here. <laughs> Daisy, those boards are put there to keep you and the other larger animals out of the pig area. <laughs> uh, so here we are inside, lots of light and shelter from the wind. And there's the other Daisy, the sheep Daisy. <laughs> okay, so it's Daisy time out in the shelter. So here we have Moira. Moira is doing fantastic since she first came in. And somebody had commented about her eyes weeping, uh, which they do, and she gets uh, a little bit of um, goop in her eyes. Uh, it's been happening since she first came in. Uh, she does have, or her eyes are slightly glossy. So her eyesight is likely slightly affected. She can still see, but likely not as well as the others. Uh, so we have Piper here and Petey. Yes, Petey. Did you guys get up because somebody took over your bed? <laughs> Almost looks like Petey wants to go back in. <laughs> Daisy is in your bed, isn't she? Yes. Okay, Daisy. Come on, Petey wants to go to bed. Come on. Out you go. Come on, Karen. Atta girl. Come on. Uh, are you going to be able to get underneath there? You got in. Come on. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. There it is. See? I guess we're going to have to fix that. <laughs> All right. So getting ready for winter. So what does that entail? Uh, so this building up here has a, it's a shelter roof and it has a fairly slow slope to it or a low slope. Uh, so what we found in previous winters is what happens is the ice kind of comes over 
we've got this eaves here, uh, which normally it, the rainwater drips into it, but uh, the ice slides on it and it comes out and it ends up dripping down over here, getting this area all mucky. So the plan is, uh, and we'll probably look at this in the next couple days, uh, is to get some L brackets, some air L channel, which we do have. I think it was used for shelving units that we've got. Uh, and we're gonna screw that to the top along here. Uh, so it's gonna go over and it'll be an L bracket that comes up. So any snow that lands on that roof, and as the melt happens in the spring, it'll keep it in place uh, and melt and not slide the ice off. So what do we do with the birds during the winter months? Uh, so the ducks that are scattered around the yard as well as the geese over here, uh, they will be going over into uh, the winter duck goose house, I guess we will call it. Uh, this side of it is rabbits and they've got a run that comes out that they have uh, full access to during the winter. And then the ducks and geese are over on this side and they've got this area here as an opening. Uh, so we leave them in there, we feed them in there, we water them in there. Uh, now, the Muscovy ducks. Uh, so Muscovy ducks aren't native to this high northern of a region. Uh, they're from the, uh, the north end of South America. Uh, they're, they're found in, in Florida, they're found in you know, the southern United States, they're found in UK. In areas where the temperature doesn't plummet to down to below minus 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, because once they get down to that level, their legs will freeze up or their muscles in their legs will freeze up. And then they'll just simply fall over and they can't get around. Uh, so these guys do need to be in a warmer area, which is a reason why they do come into us, is because people realize that, and we were one of them almost 20 years ago, when we discovered that you cannot have them out with the general population uh, with, um, with the ducks. What are you doing, Fernando? <laughs> you know, you want to steal the spotlight, don't you? It's like, no, it's all about me. Yes, I'm sorry I missed you in the channel trailer last week. I apologize, but you did come in the other day and have lunch with us and we gave you strawberries. So I should be good, right? <laughs> uh, his feathers, you know, if you look at, uh, it's, it was about a month, I guess, and all of his front feathers here, it was just stubble. And his tail, he had one feather sticking up from his tail. And <laughs> it was just, and a poor Fernando. But they go through that during their molt, uh, and now he's back, uh, back 100%. Levi, what are you doing? Okay, no, don't chew on my zipper. Oh, you guys, you're like toddlers. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, um, so yeah, the Muscovy Ducks, as I was saying, will not be going in there. They will be going into uh, our main building, which we'll go into in a minute. And it is not heated. It's actually cooled during the winter months. Now, when we first built the building, uh, we had set it up so that there was plug-ins uh, in every pen so that we could put uh, heat lamps that come down. Um, but we soon realized that we didn't need it. It was the animal's body temperature, believe it or not, keeps the temperature inside that building to above uh, the freezing point. So we have an exhaust fan that is right there on the building and that actually is set up to a thermostat uh, set to air conditioning and the temperature is set to about you know, one or two degrees Celsius, just above freezing, so that we don't have to worry about the water freezing, which is the main concern, because these guys can handle, as well as uh, the chickens and the other animals in there, they can handle below zero, um, but the, it's just a matter of the water freezing, which is just more of a pain than anything, so we just keep it right above freezing. We don't want to keep it too warm, or else you can get high humidity, and you can start to get mold growing in your building, so you always want proper ventilation. Now we call this rooster Billy, as in Billy Idol. And I don't know why, but he just loves to hang out with the, uh, the rabbits. He is always in the rabbit pen. He can get out very easily uh, inside here. He just has to jump up. And he is quite often seen roosting right there. 
but he tends to jump in, so he loves hanging out with rabbits. Uh, we have the three rabbits in here. The other ones uh, are inside. They, um, you know, they're in isolation, so we don't want to mix uh, our rabbits that we've had in here with new rabbits that came in. We always want to look at biosecurity and making sure that uh, they've been in isolation uh, for an allotted amount of time and then checked out before they are added to uh, the other animals just to keep things uh, on the up and up. Uh, so this is their area here. Now, uh, I wanna bring something up here. So Gallagher is one of our sponsors um, that um, provides an email link to us and we actually can, uh, or you can get a 10% discount on purchasing any Gallagher products using the link in the description. Uh, the reason why I just wanted to mention that I bought the M1100, I didn't need that size of a system. I could have gone a little bit lower, um, but what I really liked were these lights. Uh, so you can see there, you've got the one red, you've got the two yellow and the two green. Uh, the other day I had noticed that one of the green lights was not coming on. Uh, so we uh, took a look at the fencing system and we noticed that during a, a heavy wind uh, it was some trees, you know, over in that area there, there was about three of them that fell down onto the fence system uh, and was grounding the lines out. So um, this is, uh, you know, if you are planning on getting an, an electric uh, charger fence system, um, these are really great because at a glance when you're in here, you can tell where your system's at uh, and if there's any kind of problem on it. Uh, if there is a problem, you can use their fault finder, which will, um, and I've, I've done a video on that in the past uh, to find out where the break is in your system. So uh, that's why I went with that system there and it's uh, in here in an open area and I can see it uh, when I'm walking through. So it just works out great. Uh, now coming into this area here, we can see we've got our hay all stored up. This is usually for the boys. Uh, so this is kind of our supply uh, for the front area here. We do have a bunch more hay. There's the boys there. <laughs> We do have a bunch more hay down in the barn, which you can't really see, but it's, uh, it's down there <laughs> uh, and it's full of hay. So what we'll do is we'll take the truck and we'll drive down there and we'll, we'll pick some up and we'll bring it back and, and store it in the front section of this uh, and maybe have to get hay every, yeah, every three or four days. Hey boys, how you guys doing? Um, so here is another water got some leaves in there we'll have to clean that out once they start uh, once the wind dies down and we uh, we don't have any more falling leaves uh, and then what we do is we actually run an extension cord from the outlet there uh, we end up just running it up here and then over uh, into here so that'll keep that all ice free oh boys Boys will be boys, won't you? <laughs> okay, well, I, I don't have a wide enough angle lens for you to be that close. Ow, that was my bum. What are you doing? <laughs> Come here. I'm gonna have to change anyway because I'm already smelling like goat. Right? Oh, but I'm gonna have to wash my jacket. Never thought of that. So, yeah, feel the love, right? <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Wow. Wow. Hey. Come here. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. But see, he does show show respect as as I miss his horn. Um, he won't jump and hit me intentionally. So if there is any problems where, well, I kind of missed his horn, it was not intentional. <laughs> so if I push him back, he will come up, but he'll just come down in front of me. So he's not actually going to headbutt me like he would or like other goats, male and female, do. Right, buddy? Yes. You just like to play. You just like to play. <laughs> ah. 
Billy! Billy, you don't want to play? Oh, you're going to go check out the camera, aren't you? Okay. <laughs> Alright, no, don't eat the camera. Don't eat the camera. <laughs> Okay, so if you've been following our posts on Facebook, then you would have seen uh, Scuba de Hutch. <laughs> so Scuba de Hutch is a call duck. Uh, it's a male drake call duck. And where he lived, there was another, or at least one other drake as well. And this little boy was a little too pushy for everybody's liking. He was jealous. He got a lot of attention, very friendly. Um, and he would pick on the other drakes. So they contacted us and asked if um, we wouldn't uh, mind taking uh, him off their hands. So uh, the name, here he is right here. <laughs> the name Scuba de Hutch, I guess he came up with, they were naming them and he came up with it with his, I think, grandkids. And this is little Scuba de Hutch or Scooby, which I think we're gonna call him. Uh, so he is um, a small white call duck and just the cutest little thing. So I, in the picture that I posted on Facebook, it's a little hard to tell how big he is. So if I were to come over, so this is him. <laughs> so you can see how small he is. Uh, you can hear that. It's not really a quack. It's kind of a, that's, that's, it's a, I don't even know what you, it's more of a rasp, I, Muscovies I say, more of a rasp, but it's not a full quack, quack, quack. Uh, males will have kind of a softer quack to them. And what they also have, okay, where are you going? Where are you going? Stay here. Is on the tail, <laughs> you can see that little curly, okay, okay, Scooby, Scooby, Scooby. <laughs> see that little curly feather right there? That is called a drake feather. Uh, now, they don't always have it. Okay, I'll put you down now, but there you go. <laughs> they don't always have it um, because it will, you know, they will molt and they'll lose their, their feathers. And sometimes uh, the drake feather isn't uh, visible. Oh boy. Now the water we change regularly, but uh, he is a duck and he does go in and bathe in it. Uh, so it does get a little dirty. So this is the little black lamb that was rescued uh, and brought to us. She was found on the highway. Um, we're not sure how she got there. The people who found her thought that she had fallen out of a truck. She had in head injuries. Uh, she was checked out by the vet. She was given some antibiotics uh, and uh, kind of sent home. But of course, the people who had her didn't have any place for her. They didn't have any fencing, proper fencing for her. Uh, so that's when they gave us a call. Uh, now, she did look a little rough in the beginning. Uh, last video, and a few of you had pointed out that it was uh, selenium deficiencies. So selenium deficiencies, we had a, uh, a goat named Lucy years ago, and she was born uh, from a rescued goat that came into us. Didn't, didn't know she was pregnant, actually. There was no male buck on yard when, where she came from. So she was, these two little kids are a surprise and they were doing fine and then all of a sudden, they're, they couldn't stand. They started falling down, not being able to get up. Uh, and that is known as white muscle disease and it's a side effect or it's a cause from the lack of a, a mineral called selenium. Now, you don't want to just start injecting selenium E to animals just because you see that they are weak. Uh, because selenium, if given too much, it can actually be their downfall. Uh, now, we gave the injections to both Lucy and her brother Joey. Uh, her brother Joey didn't make it for whatever reason. We didn't see any turnaround, but Lucy did. Uh, now her growth was stunted uh, and she had passed away last year. So she had lived about six years, which is probably six years longer than she would have otherwise. Uh, but you wanna leave selenium to kind of a last, a, a last step. Uh, so what we did with this one here, and we've named her, thank you for all the wonderful names. So we've named her Onyx. 
Uh, and Onyx is doing quite a bit better than when she came in. Um, she's resting now. She had her electrolytes, which are in her bowl here. Uh, and we've been giving her goat's milk. So she's doing a lot better. Hey, how's the girl? Yes, hi. Oh, there you go. Oh, big stretch. <laughs> uh, so her, um, her legs were, were um, together and she had kind of, she was hunched over. Um, so that was, um, that's one of the things that um, would tell us that she has some malnutrition to her. Uh, and it's something we've seen in the past as well. Um, so they're kind of curled up. You'll see possibly some shaking as well. Uh, what you want to make sure is you want to make sure that while well, checking their poop, making sure their poop is healthy looking, not diarrhea. Um, so giving the electrolytes helped out, giving the goat's milk, uh, making sure that she's got enough fat in her diet. She is still young um, and that's going to drive her through. So she's doing quite a bit better and she didn't ma now, but um, the last times I came in she was bawing. Uh, so we've named her Onyx. Uh, the girls kind of decided that, uh, that name. <laughs> hey. Um, now what I've also done is uh, I've got, yeah, I've pulled camera footage from the yard uh, just to catch little different moments that occur. Uh, and what I've done here is uh, Real Link, which is a company that uh, has sent me a few cameras in the past. Uh, they don't send me, you know, they, there's no monetary gain or anything, but they do send me these cameras. Um, so I usually have them in the video and I've used them before in the bird videos. You may have seen that where the birds are hatching underneath the deck. Uh, this one here is really great. Uh, it hooks up just to a plug-in and it's wireless. Um, so it wirelessly transmits uh, to the house. So I've used it as a baby monitor for animals. Uh, and it just shows this area here and it works really well. So you can check in, especially in the spring when we've got the, uh, the mama goats in here and we're expecting. Uh, so it's just a great way, yeah, shake. It's a great way to, um, uh, to monitor them. And so, and I think you can pick them up for about 60 bucks. This one here has motion recording, so you can record back. Uh, and then it's also got a built-in light up top. And I've even rigged it in to Google Home, my Google Smart Home. Hey Google, play barn camera on kitchen display. Okay, streaming Loomis on kitchen display. So if you are interested in, uh, in a camera like that, it works good for, uh, it's, it's meant actually to have at your front door and then you can monitor. It'll send you push notifications, it'll send you emails. So it's kind of a whole security thing. Uh, but I've got cameras around the house so I don't really need it. Um, you can also use it as a baby monitor too. If you know, if you, you can buy those monitors that you sometimes spend $150 on. Uh, this thing I think is about 60 bucks, so it works out really well. I'll put a link down in the description. <laughs> what is it with tripods? Hey, come here. <laughs> come here. <laughs> oh, here. I'll just pick you up. Here. I'll cuddle you. You're, you're the size I can cuddle now. Uh, there. There we go. <laughs> so her head wound has, um, has healed nicely. She's doing really well. She's got lots of energy. Um, she, um, when she first came in, she was, she was slow and very docile, um, just kind of off. Uh, but now when we walk in, she was sleeping here when I came in, but every other time we walk in, uh, we hear the ba ba, which we didn't hear in the beginning, so that's really good. So I think she's doing really well. Uh, we're gonna have uh, Sheldon come in uh, with her over the winter time, uh, and they're gonna be buddies. So and maybe Scooby too. Scooby Doo, <laughs> Scooby Doo. All right, there you go. So that is the update on our little Onyx. So here are some of the other cameras that I have in here as well. Um, throughout the barn I've got cameras just to watch everybody. Uh, now we still have a fair amount of rabbits remaining, um, but we're, I think we're down to about 60. We had 100 of them come in. Uh, we are finding good homes for them. 
um, but it's just taking a little bit longer than, uh, than we initially thought. Um, so here's what we have left. They are, have been getting quite a bit uh, better when we go in and feed them. Uh, I think they realize that we are friend and not foe, uh, so they're getting a little bit more comfortable. Uh, and of course the little ducklings in here, the Muscovy ducklings, uh, are getting larger, quite a bit larger. We've got some here in the bowl. Oh, they're gonna, they're gonna take off. Mommy, mommy, mommy! There's a big bad man coming. <laughs> so there we go, there is the eight of them. Uh, and then we have the other hen underneath the tree there with her guinea keats, her three guinea keats. And they're getting quite a bit larger too. Listen to those birds. Oh, they heard me coming. <laughs> There's probably a hundred or so birds in that tree. They're just talking about winter and what they're gonna do, I guess. Sheldon! Sheldon! I see you, you can look away all you like. <laughs> Sheldon, come here, buddy. How you doing? <laughs> so Sheldon is our special goat. Uh, our, what we like to say, our autistic goat. And he, um, he, had a, he had a share of problems when he was younger. Couldn't stand, uh, had problems feeding. And now he's just a goofy little boy. <laughs> Sheldon! 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 <laughs> oh, silly boy. Fernando! <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Sheldon, what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Hi, bud. What are you doing? Hi. Do you smell... Do you smell the other males on me? <laughs> I smell like goat, don't I, bud? <laughs> Sheldon is fixed. <laughs> so, <laughs> but he probably smells Carl and Billy on me. Don't you? Don't you? Yes, are you our special little boy? Are you? <laughs> uh, you bet. So yeah, he's gonna go inside. Uh, we wanna make sure that uh, Onyx is uh, stronger um, because, you know, he sometimes, Sheldon will sometimes play and we want to make sure Onyx is, uh, is good. <laughs> hey, how about a scratch between the horns? Hey? Oh, there you go. Yes. Oh, you're going to fight me? Oh, you're going to fight me? <laughs> you silly boy. <laughs> so we don't dehorn or debud the goats on our farm. Uh, we don't find that is a necessity. Uh, they do use them with other goats in playing. Uh, they are good-natured enough that we have no concerns about even little toddlers being around them. Uh, and even, you saw earlier with Carl, he's got complete respect. So, something they use their horns for is they'll use them for scratching quite often. And they also work to dissipate heat. So, the two horns on his head um, will dissipate any heat and there is less of a chance for a heat exhaustion because they just work as heat sinks off of the top of their head. Uh, so, you know, they were born with these, <laughs> these horns. We don't want to take them away, do we, buddy? No, and they're actually, they're pretty, they're pretty warm as it is right now. Plus, they make a great handle. <laughs> right, bud? Okay, Fernando, see you later, buddy. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Happy Canadian Thanksgiving, I should say. And all to, to all my fellow Canadians, I also wish uh, that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. Here in Canada, it is in October. In the US, it's in November. Likely because Thanksgiving is the celebration of harvest. Uh, so get together and, um, and enjoy the, the harvest. Uh, now, of course, as you can see here, you know, we're getting pretty barren. Um, the crops are off the fields. There's still sunflower seeds that are looking pretty uh, dark and shriveled up on some of the fields. Uh, they get harvested probably in around November, possibly even December. They kind of disappear after the first snow. Um, so of course in the U.S. it's warmer, thus harvesting would likely happen later on in the year. So that's kind of my take as to why Canadians celebrate Thanksgiving in October and uh, 
uh, the US and I think Brazil. Um, there's probably other countries in there. Uh, let me know if you celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, put it down in the comments and uh, let me know when you celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, well, that is it for another video. I hope uh, you all enjoyed the video. I think I got everybody. I may not have got cheese and quackers. They were over there uh, at one point, but you did see hi, the Muscovy. Uh, and if you have any questions about how we deal with winter, uh, leave them down in the comments. You can always go back and watch one of the playlists. So I'll put a playlist uh, up here for you to click on and you can check out and uh, see what happens during the winter as well as all other seasons. Until next week, have a wonderful one and we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.